Hello, my name is Matthew Jessner, White Tiger Qigong instructor. We're here today to speak about the three treasures in Qigong. The three treasures are Jing, which is life essence, Qi, which is energy, and Shen, which is the spirit. We also divide these into our practice into the three harmonies, which would then be body, breath, and spirit. You'll notice that we're speaking in trilogies, which takes us away from the binary thinking of plus and minus and dual opposites. The moment we integrate a triad, there is then a cyclical nature, not necessarily circular, but cyclical. So we're no longer into plus and minus. And even when you notice the yin yang symbol, there is the black and white, the different forms, but there's a third image, which is the unity of these dualities. So this is very important to understand in terms of the symbolism and also the way that we practice. So the three bodies and the three treasures, Jing being physical in essence, the physical body, Qi, energy body, and Shen, the spirit body. Now the Jing corresponds to the physical self and the earth and the essences in our direct physical environment. It is also associated with our genetics and our transmission. And there's a certain amount of Qi which is inherited, which comes from our heritage and our genetics. And then there is the acquired Qi, which is the way we live our lives and the energy that we produce and the energy that we ingest into our food or we breathe in. And this is then acquired Qi. Our management of the acquired Qi has a great deal to do with, with the depletion or the longevity of our lives. And then Shen. So the Qigong, our Qigong, which is Qi, the energy and the vitality, and Gong, which is refined skill or crafting, this Qigong, this energy practice, nourishes our Shen, which is our spirit and our intent. And then we get into the physical manifestation of our intent, our intent through the energy, and then we get into a cyclical relationship of the three treasures. So Qigong concentrates your mind and spirit by simplifying and purifying the mind and diminishing our desires and keeping the mind more or less available. We're not trying to turn the mind off, but we're trying to keep the mind very, very broad in terms of pin focus, intent, activity, and then also receptiveness and understanding of our environment. So the pyramid of progression through the three treasures, Jing, foundation, Qi, existence, energy, Shen, intent, and spirit. So how does Qigong really cultivate the three treasures which exist in our whole lives? Well, the Taoist concept of three treasures maps onto modern science in many ways. We're understanding more and more in our time about our physical well-being and the way that we need to invest in this in order to develop emotionally, develop in society, and develop in our interrelationship with ourselves, our environment, and our societies. One of the first and most evident things is to adjust the way that we relate to our bodies in terms of what we consume and ingest and what we produce in terms of time. So the continuous movement is very important in terms of our own physicality. That movement then moves the blood, moves the lymphatic system, which has to do with our immunity, has to do with everything else. And the movement then requires, well, I'm not even speaking about cardio, where you're actually burning calories or ingesting these things, which is highly important from a mechanic standpoint. But what we're talking about really is the movement of the energies through the meridians. And when we're moving certain parts of our body, that we're actually orienting the flows that have to do with very tangible and very practical aspects of our fascia, the interrelationship with the skin, the muscles, the organs, and then the bones. Also adjusting our breath. Adjusting our breath doesn't just mean to adjust the, the, the inhalation and exhalation. We need to understand the purpose of our breath. So the purpose of our breath is not just to bring in oxygen when we need it desperately or to expulse it when we think that it's bad. It's very important to understand the breathing as a circulation and an interrelationship with other systemic functions and then the spirit. So obviously the spirit is affected in our bodies by the quality of our physical integration. At the same time, the breathing is an evident link between the way that we approach our bodies and also the way that we nourish the spirit through conscious development. Interesting on an aside, breath is an autonomic nervous reaction. We breathe when we sleep in an autonomous uh, fashion, but also we have a con conscious control over it. So it's an interesting line between the, the, the direct 
control we have of our breath and the autonomous nature of it, as opposed to our heartbeats. Yes, of course, there are masters that can actually directly affect the heartbeat without affecting the entire metabolism, but everyone has the possibility to inhale and suspend and exhale and suspend. And the moment we do that, we're starting to get along the line of uniting the three harmonies. So they have a mutual effect. We're talking about the mutual effect of chi. Now, the chi will be cultivated into spirit. The spirit then directs the activity. The activity solicits the gene. So we're going from essence into energy into spirit. Essence, energy, spirit. And you can go either way around that cycle and they have an interdependent relationship. And when we don't that, when we dissociate these things, we dissociate jing, essence, from our lives, or we dissociate energy from our lives, or we isolate spirit. Any one of these things, we call this death by a thousand cuts. It sounds very ominous and horrible, but it really is all the little things that deplete our essence, all the little things that diminish our energy, and all the little things that pollute our spirit. Over time, it becomes a kind of question of degradation. So in terms of direct environmental influence, obviously pollution, food toxins, heavy metals, all these things are a direct influence upon our physical body. And then our energy, poor habits, not enough sleep, excess work, or the kind of work, incorrect diet, which we don't have to go into much now, and then lack of exercise. Exercise being not only the physical biomechanical movement, but also the way that we exercise our conscious control over our bodies. This is quite important. So when we lack of movement, our blood becomes sort of sticky and sedate. We know this. That doesn't mean that you have to be an Olympic athlete to have good health. And it doesn't necessarily guarantee that. If you over solicit your body, then you can also deplete your energy just as well. It's important to have this kind of a balance. But a lack of circulation to the organs and a lack of proper breathing, just the entire system doesn't function as such. Build up of excess emotions, excess uh, elation. We're always going from extremes. We, the modern times where I was talking about so-and-so is bipolar, or these people, all these things. It's funny how everyone is bipolar all of a sudden. It's because if you have a polarity and you don't have a triple harmony to work it out, you can be totally in your head or totally in your body. And what happened to the energy? Or you can be totally in your body and totally in your spirit. What happened to the essence? So this trilogy aspect of treasures balances out that dualistic thinking. Nervous systems and emotions. Funny about that, really. Or we think that the, the emotions that we feel and what the nervous system reacts to, it becomes a loop because then the nervous system will stimulate certain endocrine functions. Hormones then stimulate emotions and then we go into these loops. When we get into a positive loop, it's a good thing. When we get into a negative loop, it's hard to kind of turn that around unless you understand the triggers of these loops. So we can go into emotional loops for a very long time. <laughs> a little bit reluctant to go into uh, that at the moment, but we can make our well-being a lifestyle rather than an added value. So it's very important that well-being is not a narcissistic or selfish pursuit. It is actually a responsibility to the gift that is this life. So there is a cue, which is that we need to actually feel maybe aches or emotions or whatever, and we're gonna to wanna to practice, we're gonna to wanna to do something with that. So Qigong as a fashion of dealing with that, then it could become not a remedy, but a practice. And then through that practice, then we get the reward. We feel better, we have less of the aches, we gain strength, we gain focus, we gain better sleep, we gain many, many things. And then it becomes, again, cyclical, the three treasures. So we have a cue, we have a routine or a practice, and then we have a reward or a result. And reward doesn't mean you've been a good boy or a bad girl or any of that. But what happens is it becomes a cyclical influence, the interdependency of these treasures. So usually to change a habit, around 21 days to change a habit. Obviously the first 10 days of any kind of withdrawal from something, there's always the first bit there. And we're developing a, a habit of uh, consumption, say for instance, stop biting your fingernails. It doesn't always have to be smoking, okay? And then when we get past 90 days, around three months, which is funny enough, it's almost like a season in terms of the seasons. Turn, turn, turn. 90 days, we start to get into something that is integrated into our, into our lifestyle. And then our life path, a path of cultivation is then another story. So how do we practically get Qigong as an approach in terms of balancing the three treasures? I will do another short video on top of this to make some physical propositions to have a sensorial approach to this. Thank you. So welcome back to the three treasures. So just for a very basic sensation, we will view the lower part of the three treasures, the lower Dan Chen, like a cauldron, a large 
metal cauldron with a lot of heat and generating. It's a very round, heavy base. And in the middle, like a chamber, a very open spatial chamber, the thoracic chamber. And then above, like a dome, like a cupola. So on either side, it's nice and round and open and containing in a, in a positive sense. And in the middle, nice and open. So it's not in front, the three treasures, the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, and the upper Dantian. Jing, Qi, Shen, Xia Dantian, Chong Dantian, Shen Dantian. Just to begin with. So on a very basic sensorial level, let's take both of our hands and place them just below the navel on the belly. Let's just try having our right hand on top of the left hand. It doesn't matter at the moment, men, women, all, of, all that other stuff, we're not there now. So left hand on the belly, right hand on top of the left hand. And you inhale, just breathe down there and feel the cauldron. And there's the cauldron. Now take the top hand and place it just on the solar plexus and breathe in again. And you feel the juxtaposition of these two centers, just nice superposed, Jing, Qi, inhale. Now take the lower hand and place it on top of your head gently on the dome, the cupola and feel the relationship of the middle hand, which is the right hand, and the top hand, which is the left hand. Just feel that. Look out. Now take the middle hand and place it on the lower abdomen, and you'll feel the polarity of the top hand and the lower hand. And then the middle hand will call you, and then take your top hand and lower it into the middle, and you're feeling your energy sink down again. The middle dantian, lower dantian, Inhale, feel. And then place the middle hand on top and we've changed hands. So we're down at the cauldron, both hands on the lower abdomen at the cauldron. We're now at the Xia Dantian, the lower Dantian. Inhale and feel that cauldron. Jing, essence. And then place the top hand just in front of the chest and open the chamber and feel the relationship of the lower Dantian and the middle Dantian. Keep the middle hand where it is and then inhale and just place the top hand on top of your cranium, just nice on the crown and feel the relationship. And then just take your middle hand and lower it down onto the belly again. And feel the polarity, the top the spirit, the lower, the essence and take the top hand and place it on the middle and then we have the chi. Inhale there, feel the chamber, inhale. And then place the top hand and there we are again, back to where we came from. So that's a really nice way of just locating the feeling of the cauldron, the chamber and the cupola and understanding their polarities and their interrelationship. Now let's try one more thing for the triple burner, triple one. The hands will be in a neutral position where the hands are not squeezing together necessarily. A little bit of space in there, just placed gently together. And when the hands are in front of the heart, we're not lifting the elbows. The elbows are just lifting. The only thing lifting on the inside is the, your core. I don't mean your core, the core. Nice and lifted. So that's one bit that we're doing. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to change that polarity with the fingertips up and we're going to point the fingertips down, but notice that they don't raise. We just lower the hands down on a release and the hands are straight down. So it's the same thing. The hands are slightly separated, no big pressure. And so this position is very important. Please put that on your bookmark. Standing nice and easy, we're going to just raise the hands up a little bit and lift the elbows and just lower the arms on two clouds. So it's not a big deal about pushing. Height is, however, related to here. We're opening and just lower the hands on two clouds. And we're gonna turn the hands so that the wrists are facing directly. Notice that I'm not lifting. We're just turning so that the, the wrists are lifting to the heavens. And then from there, we're going to take those two points and join them above our head and look straight up. 
Okay. So now we've remembered all those points. Now we're going to put them together. Standing comfortably, we're going to inhale, raise the arms, and just open the palms and let the hands rest on two clouds. Turn the wrists to the sky without changing anything else. And now inhale, join the two wrists and open the palms and open up to the heavens. And now we're clearly in the upper part, the shun. Lower the hands gently, gently, gently in front of the heart. And relax. This is a neutral position in balance. Gently raise the hands in front of your gaze and look out. Inhale. And gently exhale. Light pressure in between the palms. Push gently. Release. And the fingertips float forward and down. And we let the energy sink down into the earth, clearly into the cauldron. Drawing up on an inhale now into the heart, pressing gently. And really straight the way down. And wash into the earth. Now the earth comes through your body, into your heart, into the sky. Gather in the sky, into the heart, and into the earth. Jing, Qi, Shen. One more time. Essence, Jing. Heart, Qi. Spirit, Shen. Unity, Qi. From the Shen up. To Jing, the essence, bring up into the heart and release. And you have just joined the three treasures of Jing, Qi, and Shen. Hello, my name is Matthew Jesner, White Tiger Qigong instructor. Welcome to the White Tiger YouTube channel. Please enjoy the wide range of instructional videos that we have to share with you. If you like this video, click like. If you wish to subscribe, please subscribe. And if you have comments, we welcome your comments below. And last and not least, please don't forget to go to visit our website, www.whitetigerchikong.com. Thanks.